let's select our pyro solver let's go to collision and um, we just have to let the sol solver know that you know we have a collider and we have a frame range that's not static and now um, because my animation is up to 100 and I don't need to cycle because it's only once and as you guys can see it says what do I do with this incoming stuff so basically I didn't need to rename this to collision I could name this to whatever I want and then these names would conform here and that will work also the only difference I made is that I don't want crazy smoke push so I just put the velocity scale to one now if I press play here to make sure that our collider is working or not and then we'll see there it is okay so our car just jumped through this section and the collision did work okay cool so our smoke is cutting a bit in front I guess we would need to use this to go a little bit more further Okay, and if we need a bit more accuracy, let's go 0.25. Obviously, more accurate we make, slower things become. Let's wait for the pre-cache to finish. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And it's not the same speed now, it's actually you're suffering from VDV conversion because I didn't change the resolution anyway. All right. Now let's go back. Let's save our scene. And I'm going to put this to back to one. Um, I, I did say I did animate the disturbance, but I think it's not necessarily needed anymore because it's kind of looking reasonable to my taste. Um, and then hopefully the next thing we want to see is the cached version of this. So I'm going to cache this out. Um, I'm going to cache it to frame. Oh, sorry. There's one more thing. That's the important one. The where did I retime this? Because oh no, this ret retime method works in during render, so we're gonna keep that that way. So which means that I want to cache this up until frame 100, because then we're gonna retime it. Let's go back to my original settings. Yes, I don't want 140. I want 100. Now my base name. I want this to be OS. OS, but like this, and I'll call this firewall. And I don't want this to go under geo, but actually they can, but I don't want, I want to after delete them so I can have a little clean packaging for you guys. So we'll call this caches pyro. Okay, so everything will go under project folder geocaches pyro and then actually I'll just call this firewall no it is just everything I did is this actually yes so it's gonna go under caches firewall sim okay now I'm gonna press save and save this to disk pause the uh, recording and we'll come back to it Okay, uh, this is finished. Now let's see what's happening here. If we press play, boom, 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 boom. Did we change it? Did I change the minimal? Yeah. Okay, so now for every simulated object, I have a, a render network. So, oops, not like this. Let's put a geometry node. And we'll call this firewall 
render. Actually, you know, I'm going to do it like that as well. Okay, and what I do here is I'm going to object merge my volume, the my output. Now, of course, if you're running this in a you know in a farm, it's best if you render the PGOs, just loading the PGO instead of doing an object merge. Don't not do transform and keep loading these uh, uh, nodes uh, uh, as um, uh, shoot. I pressed the wrong one. I said the wrong node. And um, keep the loader. Actually, this is now, I think, by default with these loaders, they're coming in as, no, it's here, right? Load as pack disk. So that's going to make sure that your geometry is, um, you're not creating new IFDs and, and the cache is being um, sourced properly for your render. Now, okay, let's go to firewall render. So now we're pulling in the volume. Um, and if we look at everything else, huh? it's fine. Now here's one little trick you guys can use a node called vdb clip and if you want to do a little bit of a you know source testing or um anything that requires like if this cache was too heavy at the moment it's not but if it was too heavy you can always put in a box something like this that is overlapping with your sim okay and then plug that into the right input of vdb clip left takes the vdbs and immediately you're going to start filtering everything else and this is so much faster to work with you also get to see a higher resolution of your sim and this is definitely much easier to work with okay but i'm gonna disable this now so what i'm doing because i'm using redshift as well i'm trying to kind of match what i see on the viewport now i'm gonna drop down a pirate bake volume and i'm gonna look through the camera and now what I'm going to do is because I already tested these settings, but since it's a different sim, it will probably result in a slightly different look. So now my smoke color is set to ramp. My density range, I put this two here. I think actually if I go like this, it's going to give me 10. It's probably a better range. This will give us a slightly multicolored look. Okay. Now if I go to scatter, so I'm going to fire and scatter is turned off. So I'm going to turn on the scatter. It's going to give me this crazy, nice looking fiery edge settings. And this is where you start playing with your settings. Okay. This is like, it depends on where you want to end up with. But for what you see in the render, this is pretty much what I did. So color ramp 0 0.1 to 4, I think it was 4. And then I did use blur steps of 2. Okay, this is fine. Enable mask is on. This is where the cool stuff happens. And my values are 25 to 1. Okay, this is about, but use mask ramp. Did I change anything? Yes, so this is pretty much what I did. Now, if I go to fire, turn on the fire, so everything is like crazy exploded. I'm going to put a 500 here. Now I'm at the full range, so I'm just saying compute range. Of course, it's going to be on the, this frame. That's fine. Color ramp, compute range as well. So it's going to give me you know, a bit more depth to it. So if I go to masking now, which I have it turned on, it's going to start creating a bit more crunchy feel to it. This is, I set mask center to 2, mask width to 0.1, and the ramp is pretty similar. So if I turn off fire, yeah, it's it's not much doing here as much, so we maybe not even need it, honestly. No, because this is this. Uh, so basically, this is just we look at the fire, right? So if I say, okay, I want the source range to be zero, maybe two. This will start giving us some more hot areas. Okay, if I turn off masking, that's too hot now. Okay, maybe if we play with the settings a bit more. Okay, so I guess, let me go back to defaults. 